People are really getting excited about Code Interpreter for what it can do from a data science perspective, but I just had my mind completely blown by what Code Interpreter can do from a software engineering perspective. So one of the staff that I work with said, well, you can upload zip files to Code Interpreter. Can you upload a zip file for a source code repository for some application, some piece of software, and then have it go and analyze this software, this all of the different source code files at once, and basically directly modify and edit them for you. So can you actually do software engineering through Code Interpreter? And the answer is yes, you can, and it works pretty amazing, at least in my experience so far. Now, of course, you have to go and test this yourself and figure out if it works for you, but I'm gonna give you an example of this real quick. So I'm gonna upload a zip of a source code repository. This is um, a application that's written primarily in Python. And I'm just going to start off by asking it to read the source code and summarize what's in all of the different files. And so this, this uh, source code repository has a whole hodgepodge of different things inside of it. It's kind of been like a testing repository, a couple different applications, but it basically goes through and reads through all the different files. And notice I didn't have to like give the files to it or like copy and paste them in. I just uploaded a zip file of everything and it reads through and summarizes them. And then it also says, for a detailed summary of the functionality or interfaces contained in each source code file, we would need to open and read the Python files. Would you like me to do that? Well, yeah, absolutely. So I say, yes, do it. And it goes through and it reads all of the different files. And notice this is sort of game changing for software engineer, because before we were either using like Copilot to do sort of smaller changes. We had third party tools that were trying to do this, but now it's actually, we just dump our source code zip into Code Interpreter, and it's actually reading through all of our files. And so look, it's dissecting all of these different files, listing all the functions inside of them, the imports. It's already creating a roadmap of our repository, which is pretty amazing. This in itself could be useful to have and to do things with. Um, and so then I just say, okay, I need to refactor um, the generate Python module. Please list all of the files that would need to be changed. It basically immediately tells me where that function is which files are definitely going to be changed. But then it also says, hey, I don't know what changes you're going to make, so I don't know what else is going to be impacted or how I might reason about that. So if you can provide more specifics about what you want to achieve with refactoring, I can help, try to help with the um, refactor the generated code. Um, so I said, OK, I'm going to add a new required parameter to this function. And it walks me through and discusses doing that. And notice this real still isn't really enough detail to tell it like how would you change the source code? But I'm just moving that way gradually, kind of thinking through how close are we to you know, non-coders writing software? I don't think we're there yet, but we're definitely moved up in terms of the ability of this tool to help us if we're software engineers perform coding changes to multiple files at once. So it lists some changes and that's all kind of good and well and neat and it lists how I would change the function, but that's really not that exciting yet because we haven't gotten really to multiple files. So I just say, hey, the new param is going to be a dic or a dictionary that has keys for optimized document tests. The current version of the code corresponds to optimized false test, false document false. Go ahead and propose how to update just the interface to function, um, just the interface to the function and dependent uses of the function. And so it goes through and says, okay, well, in these two files, here's the new interface to that function and then you call it over in this um, other file and you can just update your other calls to it like this. And that's pretty cool and pretty useful. It's operating across multiple files. Um, and then I say, you know, let's think about exploring the code base. And by the way, I, I just encourage you to stay tuned till the end when I do an actual like real change where I have an automated change across a bunch of files and you can see what it does, which is pretty spectacular. But let's just start with another example. Let's go and say, does this code base log all of the prompts sent to chat GPT somewhere? And this code base has a bunch of code to call OpenAI um, in their, their chat completion API. If so, where's the code that does the logging and what file um, are the logs output to? So it goes and it says the log prop function appears in two Python files. Um, this suggests that these files may be responsible for logging the prompts. And that's actually 100% accurate. Those, that is where in this code, the, the prompts get logged. So it's understanding what that is. Um, and then it goes on and it says, to find out exactly where the logs are being output to, 
we need to look at the implementation of the log prompt function and the configuration of the log library in the code base. And I just say, hey, please do that. Go do it for me. And so it goes and it pulls up um, the uh, log prompt function and it says, describes what the function is designed to do. And it says, to find out where the log file is defined, we would need to examine the rest of the code base as well as other files, imports, or any scripts that import AI Coder. Would you like me to proceed with this? So it's just saying, hey, here's what all the other things that need to happen to figure out where this thing goes. Do you want to do it? And this is what a human would have to do if they wanted to perform this change. They'd have to go look around. So I say yes. And so then it goes through and it basically identifies where the log file is set up. So basically, this is where the log file is set up. It explains why that variable tells me that this is going to be the log file for this. And it basically says, if you look at AI Coder, this is the relevant line. This is where it's being output to prompt log.txt. I can't tell you how many times I've had this example of like, I'm trying to figure out where on earth is something being logged and what file is it going to? Where's that code? How do I find it? It's such a simple, common task, but man, being able to just go and upload a zip file and say, go figure it out for me, that's amazing. But I thought, you know, let's do something more interesting. So I say, let's give it a much more complex task. Let's give it a feature to add to the entire application that, that requires editing some existing files, creating some new files, but also importing new libraries and thinking about some massive, or well, not massive, but a larger change. So I say, I would like to be able to store all of the generated code snippets. So this is a tool that's asking AI programmatically to generate code snippets. And I say, I'd like to be able to store all of the generated code snippets in an index that makes them easily searchable with keywords that are present in either the prompt or the code that is output. Can you propose modifications to the code base to make this feature work? The interface to the search functionality can be the command line and a separate search.py with a main. So I'm just saying, I want to be able to, as I'm generating these code snippets, I want to index them, know what, and have a keyword index so I can go and search all of these code snippets. And I can also search the prompts that generated, and I can see what I've done in the past. You know, and this is kind of to support, you know, doing some rudimentary mining of all of the different prompts I've run on my machine. And so it goes and it, and it puts together a plan. You're going to have to log the code snippets. You could do this with NLTK or Spacey. You're going to have to create the index. You're going to have to save the index. And then you're going to have to search the index file and it starts generating some code. It says, here's a rough idea of what the search.py function would look like. And that's pretty cool, but it's still not editing my code base yet. So let's try to get it to edit my code base. So I say create a step-by-step -step plan to make all of these changes. Each step should be a concrete action towards realizing this goal. So I'm trying to move it in the direction of not just a high-level plan, but actually looking at my files and figuring out a you know, plan of attack for editing them and editing the code base to implement this feature. So now we're getting somewhere. So we've got very specific actions. You need to update the log prompt function in these two files. You need to log the prompt output dictionary to a new log file. You need to create a Python script to build the index. You need to create the search.py script, test the system, refine keyword extraction, continuous updates. And now it starts moving off more into um, the land of things I should do, but they aren't necessarily needed right now to just get this feature out there. So I say, we're gonna walk through steps one through four together. For each step, list the relevant source code files that are needed and the path to them in the original zip file. And it goes through and it basically walks through all the files that are needed. And here's the important piece, and this is gonna be important in a second, is it maps those files down to its local temporary file system inside of Code Interpreter. And this is what we're gonna to use to basically have it perform the edits for us on our code base. No more copying and pasting you know, incrementally between ChatGPT and our you know, editor or being limited to smaller edits inside of CodePilot. So it does this, it identifies all the different files. Um, it also points out the files that don't exist yet that it's gonna to need to create, and it does that. So I say, let's start step one. And it says, all right, here um, is the log prompt function. Um, here are the proposed modifications. It proposes all the modifications, right? We've all seen ChatGPT code before. So what's really new about this? Well, at this point, after it's shown me all the code, I just say, hey, 
perform these changes to, and I give it the temporary copy of that source code file that it's got. So I'm kind of indicating to it, I want you to not just show me what to do, but I want you to do it for me. Just go and apply the changes. And so it actually goes and starts rewriting this file. If you look at this, it's opening up that file now and basically going and updating the source code inside of it. So it's writing its own code. It basically goes and um, uh, updates that first file, which is AI Coder and then ask me if, it, if I'd like to proceed to updating the next file. And I just say, yes, I'd like to do that. It then goes through and updates the next file. It does something very similar. It, it um, loads that file, it updates it, performs some modifications, and then writes the new version of it. Um, it then says the next step would be to uh, log the prompt output dictionary to a log file, a new log file. This involves deciding on a name and location. Would you like me to proceed with doing that? And so I just say, yes, go ahead and continue. So it goes through and it says, okay, here's all of the new code um, to do this, um, specifies the specific files that need to be changed. In this case, these are its temporary copies of these files that it's got inside of Code Interpreter. And then it asks me, would you like to proceed? And I just say, yes. And notice I'm not doing anything at this point. I'm not copying and pasting. I'm not saying, oh, you know, you try to do this, you know, or modify or anything or complete. I'm just saying, do it. Yes, go ahead, do it. So it says, great, let's proceed. Um, it then says, I need to create this build.index file. Um, it goes through creating the building of the index. Now, is this thing the greatest thing on the planet? Not really. It's a, it's a, it's a bare bones first pass implementation of this feature, but it's actually probably sufficient maybe even for my cases. So it then says, okay, should I go and create this build.index uh, script for you? I say, yes. So it goes and writes the Python code to go and initialize and create this file. Um, it then tells me that it needs to create some other things. It needs to create this search.py file. And should we continue with that? I say, yes, we should continue with that. It creates the search.py file. Well, it actually says this is what should go in it. And then it's very, very nice and asking me again, do, should I proceed with this? I tell it yes. It writes the code to go and create that file um, and actually implement this on the file system. And now we have all the, all the code. It's all been modified. It's all been generated. My code base has been updated by Code Interpreter. It now has this new feature in it. So how do we get it? Well, I just say create a zip file with all of the modified files and a Python script that I can run to unzip everything and move it to the right place in my repo. Assume that I will have the zip and the script at the root of my repo. So I just want like, give me the zip file, give me a script that I can run that will take the zip file, de you know, un unzip it, take all the files, copy them and overwrite the versions of the files that are in my local, local repo so that I've done no hand coding whatsoever. It generates them. Surprisingly, it actually messes up on the simplest thing, which is to give me the download link. And then I just tell it, please provide download links. And now I've got the links to download my modified source code repository that has the new feature implemented inside of it. And it actually works. It's pretty mind blowing. Now, I haven't tested this thing thoroughly. I've just done a really quick and dirty test of it. I'm pretty excited about this. Your mileage may vary on the complexity of your, your source code repository. This isn't the most complex repository on the planet. You can get a sense for how many files here. It's certainly not indicative of a real repository with thousands of files, but it's also not one file. And we've moved away from one file or two files. And I'm not cut, cutting and pasting from ChatGPT into my editor and one function at a time with it having no awareness of what's in my editor. This is the key thing I think for me is I've literally uploaded my whole source code repository. It scanned all the files and it understands what is in my repo across the files. And I'm making a change that requires editing multiple files in a way that's consistent, inconsistent with what's already there. And I'm not having to go and copy and paste interfaces or things in order to get it to see what is inside of my repo. So Code Interpreter takes ChatGPT's code generation and editing of code from you know, single file and copy and paste basically 
to automatic discovery of files in your repo and modification across multiple files and even downloading a zip that has its own script to apply the changes to your local repository.